Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Hi, good morning. It's Thursday, October 29th. Yesterday, right here on GMS 89, we had some silly story about Texas being the second most <laughs> hated state in the whole country. Yeah, yeah. Unreliable sources, <laughs> shaky at best. Today, much better story. Yeah, we have some great news today. So San Antonio is named one of the best big cities in the U.S. by Travel Magazine. Yeah, and this is legit. Recognized by Condé Nast Traveler as the fifth best big city. Readers of the popular Travel Magazine voted to determine the list, which has Chicago at number one, followed by Washington, D.C., Boston, and New Orleans. So several Alamo City hotspots got a shout out. This includes the San Antonio Riverwalk and also the Pearl District and the Japanese Tea Garden. Mm -hmm. Travel Magazine reports, hey, if you're lucky, you'll be there for Fiesta, a 10-day heritage celebration that draws locals and tourists alike every April. And as you guys know, Fiesta was canceled this year due to the pandemic, but San Antonio's party with a purpose is still planning to move forward in 2021. Now, author of the article, according to ours, says uh, clearly they're not native because they also mentioned Lulu's Jailhouse Cafe, which isn't even open right now. I know. Temporarily that's, closed. That's kind but, of funny. But well, maybe they, they did the research a long time ago. Maybe. And, yeah. So I uh, will still consider it an honorable mention. So from second most hated state to San Antonio, name one of the best in the top five big cities here in the good old USA. I think we should listen to this one. That other Dead. one? Yeah. We tore it up, threw it yeah. away, we're never gonna mention it again. Mm -mm. It's nope. in the trash. <laughs> Let's look at today's Nine at Nine. At least three people are dead after a knife attack in the French city of Nice. Authorities are investigating this as a terror attack, but they believe the suspect, who is in custody, acted alone. After making landfall yesterday in Louisiana as a Category 2 hurricane, Zeta was downgraded to a tropical storm this morning as it moved through Alabama. At least two people have died due to the storm. With less than a week to go before Election Day, President Donald Trump and former Vice President Joe Biden are hitting the campaign trail hard. They'll hold dueling rallies today in the critical state of Florida. Bear County has broken the half million mark in early votes cast. Early voting continues today and tomorrow. Polls are open until 10 p.m. The pandemic getting so bad again in Europe, France and Germany have both announced new four-week partial lockdowns to curb the spread. Non-essential businesses, restaurants and bars will once again close their doors. The federal government is planning to pay for any future coronavirus vaccine for all Americans after it was approved by the FDA. Insurers, including Medicare, Medicaid, and private plans must cover the cost of administering it. The parents of an NEISD student have withdrawn their child from the district after he was given a flu vaccine without their consent. The district says the mix-up happened between two children whose names sound nearly identical. The city of San Antonio is hosting a symposium on domestic violence today and tomorrow. Spurs player Patty Mills will lead the opening session. Google's Pixel 5 smartphone will be released in the U.S. today. The phone is cheaper than the last model. And like most new phones in 2020, it also connects to 5G. And that is today's 9 at 9. Speaking of new phones, I told my son the other day, I'm, I think I'm going to upgrade to the iPhone 12. What do you And he say? goes, why? I said, <laughs> I don't know. I just know this is a 7, and it's been a while. Yeah, it's been a while. It's <laughs> and, my turn. And, well, yeah. Right, and then there's the whole 5G thing, and he goes, but are you really getting 5G? So he's opened up a whole can of worms. I would just say, I need a new phone, and oh, it's time. I, he's fired. He's out of the house. That's it. That's <laughs> oh, all I know. Oh, no. <laughs> Hi, Justin. Hey there, guys. Uh, we're looking at the forecast today. It's, it's starting off a little chilly out there. We're in the 40s right now. Clear skies. It's going to be a nice afternoon. We should be in the upper 60s. The only thing we got to caution you about today is the wind. We're going to see some gusty winds into the afternoon, and then they'll die down tonight, and we'll see less wind into the weekend. Forecast really looks pretty good. Here's a look at the numbers. 51 in Kerrville, 50 Comfort, 49 right now in Bandera, 52 Boulevardi, 56 in New Braunfels, 50 right now in Stinson. And there's a look at the wind gust, gusting out of 23 miles per hour here in San Antonio. Look at the gust there in Rock Springs, gusting to 39. So we know there's going to be some uh, pretty strong winds, again, especially early afternoon here in San Antonio. And as we look at the big picture here, our area of low pressure moving out. That's one of the reasons we're getting those gusty winds today. And then we've got Zeta racing off to the north and east. 
It affected New Orleans uh, yesterday with some big time winds. Our forecast again 65 2 o'clock. We're up around 68 by 5 o'clock. Northwesterly winds 10 to 20 miles per hour. We'll take a closer investigation of that weekend forecast and look ahead to Election Day too. coming up here in just a few minutes, guys. Let's check traffic right now at 903. Traffic is flowing there. That was uh, 410 right there at Callahan. Sun coming right at you. We had some accidents during the uh, earlier edition of GMSA, but right now we're looking great. Top stories we are following today. Emergency crews had to help remove a man who became pinned inside his vehicle during a crash on the city's northeast side overnight. This happened around 11 near Judson Road in Independence, not far from I-35. Police tell us a red sedan and a minivan crashed after one of the vehicles went uh, over the lane line. Officers say the man behind the wheel of the sedan was pinned inside. He was taken to University Hospital with injuries to the leg and face. Police say the driver of the minivan and the three children were not injured. Last year, there were 21 family violence related murders here in San Antonio. This year, there have already been 29. That's why the city is hosting its first ever domestic violence symposium. It's a virtual gathering of survivors and experts from across the world. The goal is to get people to understand domestic violence red flags and take action when they see something wrong. Officials with Metro Health's new violence prevention division tell us that the pandemic has made domestic violence an even bigger issue. COVID created the sort of perfect storm of conditions with people being at home. Um, we also saw an increase in uh, the purchase of weapons and all of the financial stress. This symposium will include three main sessions on civil law, criminal law, and the community. It started at 8.30 this morning, goes through 5 o'clock this evening, and then tomorrow from 9 to 12.30. It is free and open to everyone. You can watch on the Collaborative Commission of Domestic Violence website. We have a link all set up for you right now at ksapt.com. In your morning headlines, some impressive economic numbers just released this morning. We're going to have the details. And a body bag used for something other than a body. David Sears is here. Good morning, David. Kind of a creepy story. Is it? A little, little strange. Kind of fits with the time of year, doesn't it? Pretty much. So, But first, let's start with some pretty impressive economic news just released about an hour and a half ago. The U.S. economy grew at an historic rate of 33.1% during the third quarter, that's July through September. That is the largest quarterly gain on record. The Commerce Department estimates that about two thirds of output that was lost when the economy was hit by COVID-19 has been regained. And more good news, jobless claims took a significant drop. Only 751,000 applied for unemployment benefits last week. That is the lowest weekly number since March. By the way, the unemployment number is now down to 7.9%. You are looking at what was yesterday afternoon, Hurricane Zeta. Yeah, blew right through the shore of Louisiana. The storm hit 110 miles an hour, as Justin was talking about a few minutes ago. Roofs ripped off of houses, flooded streets. The wind and waves so powerful that that barge right there got moved from its morning. There was water just gushing in, and the doors were rattling so bad, and I couldn't understand why that was. And it wasn't until it all quieted down that my neighbors called and said, your roof is gone. Yeah, kind of an ominous shot of the eye passing over New Orleans and the Superdome. Brings back some pretty bad memories of Katrina. The storm blamed for taking two lives. That storm once again passing through Alabama, heading for the East Coast. All right, here's that kind of a creepy story out of San Diego this morning. California... <laughs> All right, so you got to stay with me on this one. See that guy? That is the owner of a mortuary transportation service being caught on home surveillance camera, taking what appears to be a body and a body bag out to the van to transport it to the funeral home. But that's not what that is. That bag was filled with valuables from the house. There was a man who died at that house earlier in the day, but a different service came and got the body. This guy, whose name is Willie Gates, showed up a little later and robbed the place. Family member noticed a bunch of stuff missing from the house. A couple of days later, police discovered the surveillance video and then figured out who the guy was. They went to his house to serve a warrant. They found 17 firearms, some of them dating all the way back to the early 1900s. They found a safe, jewelry, watches, war medals, several thousand dollars in collectible coins. Gates was charged with burglary in the first degree and receiving stolen property. And finally, see what has been accomplished by outgoing dare to do kids trying to deal with the pandemic. This is 15 year old Max Gutenberg. He has spent the last seven months training 
to beat the world record for balancing a hockey stick on his finger. All right, as kids are apt to do, he streamed his attempt on YouTube channel that he has from his bedroom. Wow, okay, he went two hours, 22 minutes and 22 seconds balancing on his finger, a hockey stick. It's a new record. But he went another two minutes just to make sure that he's safe with his new record, so. If you just try, if you just really go for it and just like focus all of your energy on that, you'll, you'll be able to do it. Uh, the Guinness Book of World Records says you have to validate the record. So it's not official just yet. But, but That's cool. So I, this is what you do during a lockdown. He, I, do, you put already, that on, do you put that on your college transcript? He <laughs> sounded know. very what, what serious it, about it. Yeah, so. yeah. I guess um, you go ahead and put it, put it well, in Well, I mean, if anything, it shows dedication, persistence, you know, training. So yeah, That's what I was thinking. I just mm -hmm. didn't say it out loud. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. <laughs> You're going to start Davis. your balancing <laughs> act? Balancing a cell phone for... And, and tomorrow we'll go back to planking. So we'll see how you are ah. on that. I don't get it. <laughs> but hey, you're bored. I guess you come up with all kinds of ways to entertain yourself, huh? Yes, yes sir. Thank you, David. 909, 54 degrees. Still ahead on GMSA at 9. A woman in Georgia spending her days whipping up recipes for an odd but adorable dinner guest. Why she decided to create a mini restaurant for a chipmunk. Vice presidential nominee Kamala Harris scheduled to swing by three key spots in Texas. Alana Rocha with the Texas Tribune joins us later in the newscast to talk more about tomorrow's visit. Good morning. We're trying to stay warm here on the Riverwalk because we're bringing you a behind the scenes look of the Day of the Dead River Parade that was pre-recorded and will air here on KSAT very soon. But who's behind and who made it possible for these larger than live spirits to make it here to San Antonio? The full story just ahead on GMSA at 9. And another great mask, Alicia. All right, we're hoping to make up some ground from yesterday's brutal day in the markets. Right now, the Dow is up just about 33 points at 26,559. And welcome back. It's 913. Tomorrow night, we're going to show you vibrant and joyful spirits floating along the most iconic waters of San Antonio. The Dia de los Muertos River Parade, which airs at 8 p.m. tomorrow right here on Quesa, commemorates those who have passed away. But exactly how was the parade planned and executed during a pandemic? Alicia Barrera visited the Riverwalk Marina for a glimpse of what our viewers will enjoy virtually. They've traveled all the way from Mexico City to share their most precious traditions with the Alamo City and beyond. Pero si llevamos un par de meses, este, si no es que tres, cuatro meses, organizando, planeando, diseñando. Meet Paco Enriquez. Soy director técnico del Volador. He's the director of the Mexico-based workshop El Volador, a company whose talent caught the eye of Chef Johnny Hernandez to make a celebration for the dead come to life in a San Antonio way. El desfile se va a llevar a cabo en el río. What better stage than the river walk for 20 vibrant barges with spirits on board that embody the culture, traditions and history of one of Mexico's largest festivities. Para mí el favorito es este que es el Azteca porque representa el cruce del río entre la vida y la muerte. For Enriquez, his favorite is of the one of the Aztec warrior, a barge made of fiberglass and illuminated from within represent the Aztec belief that Choloscuincles, the Mexican hairless dog, guides the souls of the dead through the dangerous underworld they called Mictlán. Por supuesto, también tenemos las calaveras de azúcar y los juguetes mexicanos, este, los alebrijes. Sugar skulls, traditional Mexican children's toys, like the doll Malele that helps preserve Mexican indigenous clothing, and the brightly colored Mexican folk art sculptures, known as alebrijes, were all designed and created in Mexico City. Intervienen un centenar de personas desde artistas, artesanos, fibreros, carpinteros. Enrique says a team made up of hundreds of artists, fiberglass manufacturers, and carpenters from three Mexican companies, including El Volador, Arzumex, and Fantasus, made it possible for the Day of the Dead celebrations to continue virtually. Muy agradecidos este, con el chef Johnny, que la verdad nos haya hecho esta invitación. An opportunity Enriquez and his team say they're thankful to share with the world. And each piece of art, including that HEB papel picado that you saw that was illuminated, every single piece was made in Mexico and then shipped here to the Riverwalk for all to enjoy. And one thing that's very, very important to note is that this 
parade was pre-recorded a few weeks back and it's going to air tomorrow here on KSAT 12 at 8 p.m. So this is something that families will definitely not want to miss. Mark, Stephanie? Yeah, folks, don't go to the Riverwalk tomorrow night looking for a parade. No. It's, uh, it's in the can, <laughs> yeah. as we like to say. Yes, but we look forward to beautiful floats. Thank we you, Alicia. Do. Thank you so much, Alicia Barrera, live downtown. And uh, tell you what, the floats last year were pretty good. This year, they are over the yeah, top. They're they look great. awesome. Yeah, it's definitely worth tuning in. And I guess you really don't have to worry about the weather, although it will be nice. We've got you covered. Mm -hmm. uh, you're going to watch it right here live on KSAT. Not live, but pre-recorded yes. <laughs> yes. on KSAT. Yeah. We got well, you. I'm trying to help clear the waters and I'm muddying them further. Justin, oh, this is where you good. talk. <laughs> yes, yes, uh, we got some great weather ahead, guys. Uh, it's shaping up to be a beautiful weekend. Halloween's gonna be great. It's all looking good. The one thing that we are sort of concerned about here is the drought, right? We haven't had a whole lot of rain. And as we look at the drought monitor across the state, and this is new in, uh, into the weather center, you can see where we still have drought. It's the same old areas, uh, extreme drought from Carrizo Springs up to Sabinal. Batesville, Hondo. It's this area that's just really been suffering all year with lack of rainfall. But you'll also notice that Bear County now in a moderate drought. That's a little bit of a change with the lack of rainfall that we've seen. And you look at the Medina Lake, always a good barometer, as we say, when it comes to rainfall, it's at 47% full and falling. It's down 28 feet from the conservation pool, 21 down, uh, down 21 feet from last year. Uh, and I uh, don't know what's going on there, but uh, we were looking at the aquifer. It's also falling off a little bit. Obviously, we're in stage one restriction still with that aquifer hovering right around 660 or so. Okay, right now, 54 degrees, sunny skies, northwesterly winds at about 16, gusting to 23, so winds are already picking up some. And we think that it will be a, a windy day. Uh, we could see some gusts of around 30 miles per hour, 35 miles per hour in some cases, especially up in the hill country. 50 right now in Comfort, 50 Burning Stage, 56 New Braunfels, 50 at Stinson, and 54 right now in Hondo. Still in the 40s for our friends up there in Fredericksburg and Rock Springs, but everybody else is in the 50s at this point. A lot of dry air in place. Two points are in the 30s, so that gives you your nice swings in temperature when you see these sunny skies. Temperatures will fall off again tonight. We'll see a chilly morning tomorrow. Okay, there's a look at the wind speeds, or wind gusts, I should say, gusting to 39 right now in Rock Springs, gusting to 31 in New Braunfels, gusting to 30 in Kerrville. Yes, uh, we would call that a windy day, and wind speeds will stay up through about 6 o'clock, and then they'll fall off some as we get into tonight. And once they do fall off, that will allow those temperatures to drop in the overnight hours. Visible satellite picture. And the sun's up just enough here to give us an image of what we're dealing with here. There are some low clouds just off to our north, so we'll have to watch that. Some of our northern counties could see a little bit of that cloud cover. I don't think we'll see it here in San Antonio. No rain with that, but you do run into some rain as you get up to parts of Oklahoma. And then, of course, so we've got Zeta, which is racing out to the north and east. It was really impressive to watch. If you remember yesterday, it was down here. This thing got pulled up quickly. It moved very fast. Still did a lot of damage, though, in New Orleans. And now it's up north of Atlanta, moving into the north and east. And it may actually create a little bit of wintry weather up there. It's just part of this strange year that we've been dealing with. And this trough that is bringing us some of the windy conditions will move off to the east. What do we have coming up? Ridge of high pressure. You know what that means. Quiet weather. And that's going to give us uh, really comfortable conditions going into the weekend. Forecast. For today, 60 degrees noontime. We'll be up around 68 for a high. Northwesterly winds 15 to 20, calming some tonight. And then 72 tomorrow, 76 on Saturday for Halloween. Trick or treating temperatures should be in the 60s, 75 Sunday. And Election Day looks pretty good too. Highs in the low 70s with mostly sunny skies, guys. Thank you, Justin. I'm enjoying this nice weather. It's fantastic. We love it. Matter of fact, uh, can we wrap things up and just go? To Enjoy lunch? outside? Yes, or, I think so. Okay, 920 right now, 54 degrees. <laughs> Still ahead, many restaurants had to close amid the pandemic, but a woman in Georgia just opened a new one, sort of. Why she created a restaurant for a chipmunk. 923. She usually writes about food for a living, but the pandemic has helped a Georgia woman switch sides to making food. Now she's spending her days whipping up recipes for an odd but adorable dinner guest. CNN's Jenny Mose has a story. What's a food writer in Georgia to do when there are so few restaurants open to write about? She opened her own for a chipmunk. Oh my God, he's eating the taco. Teeny tiny tacos made of crushed almonds. He ate them with his little hands, you know, like. 
at a little picnic table that Angela Hansberger's uncle sent. Put the little table on my porch and I walked away to recycle all the cardboard. And when I came back, there was a little chipmunk just sitting at the table like a person. She named the chipmunk after jazz great Thelonious Monk, though this is probably the music chipmunks remind you of. Alvin. Thelonious doesn't have to sing for his supper. Supper that ranges from berries to sushi so small Angela used tweezers to pair a grain of rice with peaches. She doesn't skimp on the decor. Welcome to the ramen shop. Her husband used a plastic Easter egg to make a barbecue. Pizza was served atop the wire cage that encloses a champagne cork. Thelonious Monk has gone camping and eaten on white tablecloths. He's dined alongside an absentee ballot box and a skeleton. But he'll never look that thin the way he's eating. Most mornings I come down now and he's just sitting there waiting at the table for me. Like, human, hello. Angela's cat loves watching the chipmunk. He taps the window softly and makes really soft noises. Focusing on the little picture has made Angela less stressed about the big picture of COVID and presidential politics. Took away that, like, that sense of dread. If there's something Thelonious dreads eating, he drops it like a hot potato and has no shame about knocking over platters to get to his preferred dish. This is a rodent with larceny in his heart. Picked up the bowl and he drank all of the soupy ramen and then he stole the bowl. <laughs> and that cute little goblet? He shoved it in his cheek and took it away. <laughs> With his ever-present buffet, Thelonious must be thinking every day. This is the greatest day of my life. Genie Mose, CNN. Oh, one spoiled chipmunk. Yeah, Thelonious Monk. Monk. Yeah. yeah. Wouldn't it be great if she went out there one day and under the napkin there was like a tiny little 20% gratuity for, oh. <laughs> for, for serving up such a yeah, great meal? Yeah, thanks, thanks for the great meal. Yeah, yeah, that'd be cute. 926, 54 degrees. And there's still a lot more ahead on GMSA at 9. From the sweet to the sour to the spicy, the flavors of Mexican candy are familiar to most South Texans. This week, the case that explains teams sets out to find the history and evolution of these snacks. RJ Marquez and Myra Arthur break down the latest episode for us. Pandemic has changed a lot of the way we do things. Apparently that includes how we buy soda. Look at the new contactless soda fountain. And are you worried about your mail-in ballot? Wondering if it has arrived? Alana Rocha with the Texas Tribune will join us next to break down the record-breaking request of mail-in ballots. Vice presidential candidate Kamala Harris scheduled to swing through Texas tomorrow. It'll include visits to Fort Worth, Houston, and McAllen. And many people worried about their mail-in ballots, wondering if they have arrived. Alana Rocha with the Texas Tribune joins us now to talk more about the vice presidential nominee's visit and to break down those record-breaking requests for mail-in ballots. Good morning, Alana. Good morning. Senator Harris scheduled to visit the Rio Grande Valley, Fort Worth, and Houston tomorrow. Fort Worth's Tarrant County was the state's most populous county that President Trump, Trump won back in 2016. Can you explain further why the vice presidential nominee is making these three particular stops, Alana? Well, with uh, regard to Tarrant County uh, in the Fort Worth area, yes, uh, Trump carried it in 16, but in 2018, uh, Democrat Beto O'Rourke uh, slightly bested U.S. Senator Ted Cruz in that county, and so Democrat Democrats uh, see a glimmer there to capitalize on that momentum now in 2020. So that's one of the three stops uh, Kamala Harris uh, is set to make tomorrow. She's also going to be in McAllen, of course, one of the largest cities in the Rio Grande Valley. Uh, a lot of Latino voters who tend to vote Democratic. So there's the the, the thinking there. And then uh, also Harris County, of course, the, the most populous, largest county in the state that's already uh, had more than 1.1 million people cast their ballots early. Of course, Harris's uh, visit to the state coincides with the final day of early voting in Texas. And it, you know, set to mirror some of the other stops she's had around the country to mobilize voters. And Alana, officials are reporting that ballots are still being sent out with less than a week before Election Day, a product of record-breaking requests for mail-in ballots this election. But what recourse, if any, do voters have? 
You know, it depends on where they are and if they can get to a poll to vote in person, if they're not, say, overseas waiting for that ballot, uh, you know, the, the options for those people really do evaporate quickly. But uh, speaking with elections clerks, uh, some said that some voters might not receive their ballots until Halloween, Saturday. And so, uh, you know, your recourse there, if you want to wait for the mail-in ballot, is to uh, drop it off at the designated drop-off location, the single designated drop-off location within your county. Uh, make sure to bring your photo ID to show that, uh, that it's your ballot. Um, or uh, postmark it by Election Day and make sure, you know, it will get there by Wednesday uh, to the county elections office to be counted. Uh, but, you know, if you do vote in Person, it really depends on where your uh, mail-in ballot application process is. And so if the, process, if the application hasn't even been processed, you can vote uh, in person like normal. Uh, if you have the ballot, bring it with you, surrender it, sign an affidavit, and then you're able to uh, cast your ballot. So there's different uh, ways to, to make sure, uh, if you again, if you're here locally uh, or near your voting uh, county, to be able to you know, make sure your vote is, uh, is casted. The state's oil and gas industry have been having a horrible year. Some Republicans latching on to President Trump and former Vice President Biden's recent debate exchange about the energy sector. Tell us how some Republicans are using it as a closing argument for Texans to reelect the president. Yeah, uh, Biden uh, was pressed on this uh, by the moderator and by President Trump wanting to clarify his position on whether or not he would ban fracking. He said uh, he would transition away from uh, fossil fuels into renewable energy. And it's that statement uh, that Trump and others up and down the ballot, Republicans in tough races, are trying to capitalize on. You know, the industry has taken a hit uh, now in this economy and the pandemic, and they're trying to paint a, a Democratic ticket as hurting that industry further. Whether it works, uh, it's not clear. We know there's outside money coming from Democrats to help uh, Christy Castaneda, uh, the a Democrat running to be one of the three people who regulate the oil and gas industry in this state. Michael Bloomberg has invested in her uh, campaign here in the final days heavily. And so uh, this is uh, definitely a key issue, but we'll see if it's uh, you know too late with so many people having already casted their ballots. All right, Alana Rocha with the Texas Tribune. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. And back outside with live cam right now as we take a look at downtown. What you can't tell from this camera is that it's uh, kind of breezy out there. And I believe we have a new pollen count just in. Yeah, we do. Uh, everything's in the low category, surprisingly. We really thought for the world with these gusty winds, it's something we get kicked up, but thankfully, no, uh, everything's low. Mold's low, juniper's low. Ragweed, you know, we're almost out of ragweed season. Typically, it starts to fall off once we get freezing temperatures. We haven't got a freeze yet, but it is the, the numbers seem to be dropping off quite a bit. So some good news there. Uh, looking at temperatures, 51 Comfort, 54 Canyon Lake, 56 New Braunfels, 50 at Stinson. Everybody's warming up very quickly. We've already gained about 10 degrees at the airport. The big story today will be gusty winds. We've seen some wind gusts up, up close to 40 miles per hour in Rock Springs, but a lot of places reporting gusts over 30 miles per hour. We'll see that through, I'd say, about mid-afternoon, and then you'll see the winds drop off tonight, and we'll see a little bit less in the way of those gusty conditions. Uh, there are a few low clouds up there around San Angelo that are trying to work into some of our northern counties. We'll keep an eye on that, but I think we probably stay sunny here in San Antonio today. We'll top out close to 68. Sunset around 649. If you're heading out to any sort of football games tonight, it looks pretty good, but it will be a little bit chilly once the sun goes down. Guys. And taking a look at with Trans Sky, there's I-10 and Hebner. Things running pretty smoothly right now after a morning of quite a few accidents. So, and some of those cameras are shaking. There was that one at 281 and Winding Way. A new episode of Case Out Explains out now for Halloween week. The team is talking candy. Mexican candy, the favorites, the evolution of flavors, and how it's popping up in new places. RJ Marcus is in the newsroom with Myra Arthur to talk about what you can expect. This week's Case That Explains is all about the Mexican candy craze. And Myra, I gotta say, I'm a little disappointed because we did this episode and I was on vacation for the you, you entire week. You picked a terrible time to take <laughs> exactly. time off. RJ's part of our team here at Case That Explains. And yes, you were gone for this episode, mm. taking some much deserved time off. So let's catch you up 
on what you missed. Right. It was a, a whole lot of candy. Unfortunate timing. <laughs> and I saw the pictures that we posted on social media and all over the place of candy, candy, Mexican candy. Of course, we we're getting close to Halloween. So this is a pretty, uh, this is sort of the best time to do this. Myra, you got to experience this. Um, and just what were your overall thoughts on this craze? So I, I learned a lot, not only about the candy, but the origins of it. And some of these flavors date back to prehistoric times. I mean, thousands and thousands of years. So we go into that. We talk about how they made their way into the U.S., but also into Mexico itself, mm -hmm. how those flavors evolved over time when the Spanish made their way into Mexico, how sweets changed, how mm -hmm. there's even an Asian influence in the Mexican candy that we see today. So it was really interesting to learn more about where all of this got started. Yeah, we definitely run the gamut of flavors, spicy, sweet, and everything in between. Right. Uh, you got the opportunity and our team got the opportunity to go to some pretty cool candy shops here in San Antonio. What were your thoughts on those? I mean, it is just sensory overload when you walk into <laughs> these places. They're not only just fun, I mean, it's a candy shop. They're fun to be in and to yeah. be around all the different offerings. But we <laughs> talked to a lot of customers and I ask every single one, why are you here? What are you buying? Uh, what draws you to this store? And almost every person we talked to said that it was just as much about the taste and the flavor as it was a memory. They yeah. had a associated yeah. with that candy. So it seems like there is such a tradition tied to these candies, uh, but also going forward, things are changing, yeah. you know, and you're starting to see more of these candies pop up, not just in people's homes or in these candy shops, mm -hmm. but in bars and in craft cocktails. It's those flavors that are kind of really working. Yeah, yeah, working their way into those arenas. Yeah. And uh, as we were planning this out, and again, I was not part of this, so I was very <laughs> sad as we were planning it out. I was reminiscing about all the times uh, back at home eating these candies growing up. So I thought that was very, uh, very cool aspect of this. And as you mentioned, how it sort of uh, made its way into the mainstream. Uh, Myra, did you have a favorite? Out um, of the yeah, of course. So I, I did not grow up with these. Mm -hmm in my house with my family, but I've learned a lot about them, you know, living in San Antonio. So uh, I did try more than what I had originally had <laughs> at yeah. the urging of Lexi, our producer. She was my tour guide mm -hmm. uh, for this and she was relentless. She forced these candies. <laughs> I'm, I'm kidding. She really didn't. It was it was a wow. great experience that um, the Rabanaditas, those oh, yeah. were a big favorite for me. Mm -hmm. Those are the uh, chili covered yes. watermelon mm -hmm. lollipops. And I yep. actually didn't think I would like that, but I did. <laughs> yeah. um, the Sour Belts, the Picositas. Mm -hmm. Okay, those are not on my list. No. No, definitely I'll pass not. on yeah. those. It's probably not making me very popular because yeah. those are huge. But yes, there is a taste test involved. So check this episode out. I'm sure it's going to be a trip down memory lane Absolutely. for a lot of yeah. people. Uh, but also you'll learn something. You'll learn something about the history of these candies and where you might see them start to pop up in other places going forward. Very cool stuff. All right, Myra, just one last time. Just let people know how they can see this new episode of KSAT Explains, which is out this morning. That's right. KSAT TV app. You can find that on Roku, Amazon Fire Stick, any way that you stream TV, as well as our website at KSAT.com. It is there for you to view on demand anytime you'd like. You can also check out any episode that we have done of Case That Explains in those two places. Mm, sounds uh, delicious. All right, Mark and Stephanie, back to you guys. You guys, and if you're seeing a lot of smoke in the sky on San Antonio's northeast side, we have a big fire in progress. Yeah, that's happening at the 8800 block of Stark Crest Drive that's just outside of Loop 410, and we're told that there are 34 units on the scene right now. 34 different fire department vehicles out there. We have a crew on the way, but if you are traveling along 410, our worst park parkway and see a lot of smoke is due to this uh, this big big fire. There are several apartment complexes in that area. We're trying to get more information and we will check in with Katrina as soon as possible. For now, it is 940 and 54 degrees. A car that can go 300 miles an hour, a way to get a drink without touching the soda machine and a new line of sneakers just in time for Halloween. David Sears back with a consumer news roundup next. 944 technology making cars faster and making it easier to get a drink without touching too many things. And some pretty cool sneakers going on sale. Our David Sears is back with a roundup of consumer news. David? How fast do y'all's cars go? Not that fast. You ever topped it out? <laughs> no. no. 
Well, some people on Twitter one think their cars should go really fast. Right? That, that's true. Yeah, that's true. I, I just right wanted there. to pass you on the left, David. That's all. I'm sorry. <laughs> right by you. Just use your stinking blinker, would you? Okay. <laughs> all right. So you talk about fast cars. Bugatti has unveiled a super light hyper car. It's called the Bugatti Bolid, named for the French slang word for very fast car. It's equipped with 1,800 horses and can top 300 miles an hour. So why would you want a car that goes 300 miles an hour and worth millions? Bugatti says most of the car is made from lightweight carbon fiber, is designed for optimal aerodynamics. It hasn't said whether it will actually sell the car, but if the price tag was on it, it would probably read somewhere in the millions. The Where Bugatti? would you drive a car 300 miles an hour if you weren't on the salt flats somewhere? Yeah, I don't know. That's, I mean... So. I know some people drive that fast on 410, but <laughs> not, not in a Bugatti Bolide. I, I'm not that adventurous. I'm pretty boring. And for a million, you would think it has a blinker. You know, there's right. really yes. expensive cars out there. I wonder if they have blinkers. Some people just need to refill the blinker fluid, right, yeah, David? <laughs> blinker use training school. Okay. All right. So Coca-Cola and Amazon are teaming up for a contactless drink machine. Coke's freestyle machine. You knew this was coming one day. The freestyle machine uses touch screen and features more than 200 drink options. You won't need to touch the screen at all. The beverage company joined forces with Amazon Web Services to create a mobile solution. This way, you'll operate the machine with your smartphone, no app needed. All you do is scan the QR code on the machine, choose your drink, and press pour. Amazon says all of the freestyle machines in the U.S. will have the technology updated by the end of the the year. All right, so it's like the big ones at the movie theater. They're just, yeah. it's all here now. That's yeah. interesting. Makes sense. I, I mean, as it was, I was already impressed mm -hmm. with the touch screen. I'm like, oh, right. wow. And Can now. you imagine our, our kids now? They'd be like, look, I'm going <laughs> to mix the, the like, grape with the... Big Red and, and Coke. Why yeah. don't they have one where just voice activate? You just walk up to it and say, Diet Pepsi. And you get a Diet Pepsi. Why do they have... Why, you, Maybe because it won't hear you correctly sometimes, and it might get your drink wrong. Well, then Maybe it's kind of like a smorgasbord. It only serves Diet Coke, and it would be like <laughs> short circuit. <laughs> I can't figure out the whole diet thing. Coke, Pepsi, Coke, Pepsi. <laughs> uh, that's true. All right, you can jazz up your Halloween these days. If you have a costume and you need some tennis shoes, here you go. These are new items from Reebok. It's released some scary, cool new footwear just in time for... The Halloween Saturday. The new collection <laughs> is inspired by Ghostbusters film franchise. The collection includes two pairs of shoes. You can choose between the Ghost Smashers, they're only $150, <laughs> and the Classic Leather for $100. Shirts, jumpsuits like the ones in the movies are also part of the new collection. Reebok says the items will be sold online Halloween night. So, That's interesting. Hey, well, then right. we can't really go trick or treating in them. If, I mean, if we really wanted to, if they're being sold I on guess Halloween not. night. So yeah. they're, they're post trick or treat, I guess. Hey, okay. David, uh -huh. I have an update. Earlier this week, we mentioned those KFC Yule logs were going to be back at Walmart. Uh -huh. We checked the other day and they were out of stock. I got an overnight email from email saying that they are back in stock at Walmart.com. Wow. If, if you want some, yeah. That's right. <laughs> so let me know if you want to be part of the kitty. All right. Yeah. Happy Halloween. Yeah. Happy same to Halloween. <laughs> Justin's back now, and uh, KFC Yule Log aside, it is warming up out there. We start out, what, 45 degrees or so? Up to 54 now. Yeah. And, and here I thought we were going to make it through the morning without talking about blinkers, but we didn't. No. <laughs> no. We almost broke out the soapbox. <laughs> was, yeah. We just have to be safe. It's okay. Got to be safe. Uh, you know what's interesting, guys, is this tropical year, this year, the tropics have just been incredible. We've got another system out there. Zeta just moved through Louisiana. It's starting to fall apart. Now we've got a new system that the Hurricane Center is watching. They're going to give this a 60% chance of developing. Do we need to worry about it here? Probably not. Looks like it's going to move west and move towards Nicaragua, <coughs> probably making landfall somewhere in Central America. So it's not really going to affect us here. But just interesting that uh, we've had so many named storms. We've made it through a lot of the Greek list now. If it gets named, that would be Ada. It would tie the most named storms in a season with 2005. We just keep it going. Uh, just, again, really, really impressive. Time lapse this morning. Sunrise was gorgeous, and uh, temperatures are warming up as a result. Now that the sun is up, 54 degrees. Northwesterly winds at about 16 dew points, way down there at 38. Air is very dry, thanks to those northwesterly winds. And looking at the visible satellite picture, not much to see here. We've got clear skies. But just to the north, there is a little bit of a cloud deck, and I'll show you that in just a second. 54 Randolph, 56 in New Braunfels, 50 Bernie Stage, 54 right now in Hondo. 
and there is some of that cloud cover affecting places like Rock Springs and Junction. Fredericksburg, you're seeing a little bit of cloud cover, and Kerrville may see some of this. I don't think it'll make, make it much more farther to the south, so San Antonio probably stays sunny. That's on the back side of that low pressure system, by the way, that moved through. And that low pressure system is also helping to kick up the winds and drive in some of this drier air. Dew points in the 30s right now. That's where they'll stay. Look at the wind gust, though. This is impressive. 40 right now. The latest wind gust in Rock Springs. Pretty close to that in Kerrville. And gusting to 23 here in San Antonio. So it'll be a windy day. These winds will probably die down as we get into this evening. We think there's, they'll stay pretty strong through about 6 o'clock and then start to taper off tonight. Once they do, that'll lead to a cold morning tomorrow. Water vapor shows the situation very well. We get that spin in the atmosphere right there. Upper level low, pretty strong one. It's on the back side of that. You get the tight pressure gradient. You get the winds. Once this moves away, our winds really do die down. And then you've got Zeta, which raced off to the north and east. Now, affecting places like Cincinnati and Washington, D.C. with heavy rain. May turn into a little bit of wintry weather up there. But it's all moving away from us. And we look back off to the west, what do we have? High pressure, and that means quiet weather is ahead and great weather as we head into Halloween. Forecast for today, 68 degrees, your high temperature, sunny skies, northwesterly winds 10 to 20. And speaking of Halloween, let's check in on that Halloween forecast. We think uh, temperatures will begin once we start trick-or-treating in the 70s, but by prime trick-or-treating time, we're in the 60s, clear skies, and then down to 55 by 10 o'clock. Looks great all the way around. And the extended forecast, 72 Friday, 76 are high on Saturday. And the low 70s on Monday, 73 for Election Day. We'll be right back. We're still trying to get more information on that fire on the northeast side. Right now, we can provide you with a live look at uh, the scene. This is happening in the 8800 block of Starcrest just outside Loop 410. Yeah, this is outside Loop 410 uh, near Perrin Bottle Road. And at this time, it's not known if anyone has been hurt, but uh, we are hearing that there's 37 units on the scene right now. Of course, we have a crew there. We do lots of fire activity out there right now. The ladder truck is up, but we haven't seen much in the way of smoke from this particular fire. But as we said, we have a crew out there. We're trying to get for more information and we will have more of that coming up today on the news at noon. We just wanted to get you updated here at the top of the hour. All right, a 10 acre paintball and airsoft park is coming to shirts. That's right. Evo Entertainment in shirts is opening the new park in late November and it sounds pretty cool with five courses and two play environments. So the forest will be made up of three woods ball courses and the fields will be made up of two speed ball courses. Uh, the outdoor paintball and airsoft parks will be no contact, allowing guests and COVID safe play, according to EVO officials. And they're going to implement standard health and wellness checks and equipment with uh, will be thoroughly sanitized after each use. They said with the limitations we continue to face, we thought this was a perfect opportunity to get creative and offer something we've never done before. According to the CEO, with the addition of our non contact paintball and airsoft course, we can now offer our guests a new option for outdoor entertainment while still safely practicing social distancing out there in shirts. Hey, yeah. team building field trip. I feel oh, it. that's a good idea. <laughs> We're going to win. No. 